by a person that I can't remember their name. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my December wrap up for 2023. This is part two out of three. I read a total of 20 books this month so without further ado, let us get started. The first book I read is Diamond City by Francesca Flores and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Ina Solis. She is an orphan turned assassin who works for a very powerful man named Cole Patel. He took her in when she hit rock bottom and because he trained her to be the assassin she is today, she feels like she is indebted to him. She has been selling illegal diamonds on the side in the hopes of one day earning enough money to go off on her own. Cole informs her that if she completes one last high paying job for him, he will let her go. When the kill doesn't go as planned, Cole makes her enemy number one and that is when she finds herself running for her life. I thought it was a pretty fun story full of action and murder. I think that the world building was a bit lacking and I think that the writing became repetitive pretty quickly. I never fully understood what the blood magic and diamonds had to do with anything and why everything was illegal. I know was an interesting character with a very intriguing backstory. I think that she was both terrifying and caring at the same time. She did make some pretty questionable decisions when it came to Cole and I didn't really fully understand their connection. I just wasn't a fan of the romance whatsoever. I just felt that it was very toxic and I just couldn't get behind it. I did really love her friendship with Teo though and I did like Ryu. I thought he was such a little cutie and I just wanted to protect him at all costs. I do have a copy of book two so I will be picking up that soon to finish off the duology but yeah I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is The Other Woman by Sandy Jones. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Emily who meets the love of her life named Adam and she is so excited to start a life with him. Then she meets his mother Pam me and she quickly realizes that she will stop at nothing in order to sabotage their relationship. This was such a fun book. It's a thriller and it went in a way that I did not see coming whatsoever. The chapters are very short which kept my attention throughout the whole story. I was so invested right off the bat from chapter one. It is definitely a slow burn thriller. It takes a while to get into the story but honestly it was so worth it in the end. The writing is so addictive. Pammy was the absolute worst and some of the things that she did would make my mouth hang open but I loved to hate her. I could not get enough of her character and seeing what she was going to do next. I didn't really understand why Emily was staying in the relationship. I just didn't really see anything worthwhile in it, especially for a man like Adam. I'm sorry, but he was the absolute worst. Maybe almost as bad as Pammy. Honestly, the reason why I'm dropping half a star was because at one point I was just shaking my head at Emily being like, girl, why are you still here? Like just run for the hills at this point? No man is worth it and it just made me irrationally angry, so I dropped half a star to give it 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have Folded Notes from High School by Matt Boren. I gave this a 1.5 out of 5 stars. This takes place in 1991, where popular senior Tara Maureen Murphy is dating super hot popular jock Christopher Patrick Caparelli. She is about to audition for her school musical, Grease, as the lead role, Sandy. Then a freshman named Matthew Bloom comes in, auditions for Danny Zuko, gets the part, and kind of turns her whole world upside down. So this is told all through folded notes that these characters pass to each other during school, which is a cool concept in itself, but the characters were so annoying. I just got very tired of it very quickly. I actually listened to it on audiobook and it did have a full cast audio and honestly I do think that if I didn't listen to it on audio I would have given up very quickly. I absolutely hated Tara. I understand that the whole point of her character was like the mean girl, but she was just so insufferable and manipulative and I just did not see any redeeming quality whatsoever. Like there was no character development at all. The same goes for her boyfriend Christopher. He was so gross and the way he acted towards women in general was just a big no for me. Matt was an okay character. He did get on my nerves sometimes. There were only two characters that I even remotely enjoyed. Stephanie, who is Tara's best friend, who she definitely did not deserve, and then Stephanie's friend, who for the life of me, I cannot remember her name, but they were the only two redeeming characters. I really liked the 90s references. That was probably my favorite part of the book, and I did like how short 
the chapters were because each chapter was a note that was sent back and forth. It did make for a very quick read. I read it in one sitting, but it was not good. So 1.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Sing by Vivi Green. And this book just screams Taylor Swift fan fiction, which I was not necessarily mad about, but I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. After a messy breakup with her heartthrob boyfriend, a teen pop star decides to flee town and go off to an island in Maine with her two best friends. She has sworn off boys for the summer and she wants to focus on her music, but then she meets local boy Noel Bradley who wants nothing to do with the limelight. I think that this would make such a great summer read. It was pretty predictable, which made it go by very quickly, but it didn't have too much depth, so you didn't really have to think while reading. I loved the island setting. I would absolutely love to go there. I did like Noel in the beginning, but some of the things and events that happened towards the end of the book made me dislike him a little bit. I did really love his dad and little sister though. They were just such a loving family and I loved reading about them. Lily could definitely be annoying at times. She was very self-centered with a lot of the decisions that she made. I did really like the ending though and the character development that Lily went through. I think that her focusing on herself is definitely the right choice in the end. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars, definitely a Taylor Swift fan fiction, but it was a cute fast read. Next, I read The Truth Project by Dante Medema and I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows 17 year old Cordelia who decides to find out more about her ancestry by sending in her DNA to a website for her senior project. She discovers a big secret that her family has been hiding from her and she needs to decide what to do with this new information and it's kind of the story of that. This book is told in verse, emails, and text messages which I've always loved that format of a book. It is such an emotional heartbreaking story and the ending punched me right in the heart. I teared up which I don't normally do in books. I just thought it was so beautiful and I definitely recommend reading the book just solely for the ending. Seeing Cordelia go through this journey was such an emotional roller coaster. I personally was a big fan of Kodiak. I think he is just such a misunderstood sweet little baby. Also a big fan of Cordelia's father. He is an angel and I loved his character. The relationships in this book were so amazing, not only between Kodiak and Cordelia, but Cordelia and her entire family. They were just so well done. I read this book in one sitting. I really loved it. I will definitely be checking out more from this author if I get the chance. It was a four out of five star read for me. Definitely recommend checking it out. Next up, I read Made of Stars by Jenna Voris. I gave this a three out of five stars. This follows Ava, who breaks her partner in crime, Shane, out from a prison on the moon where he is being mistreated. They return to their home planet and they quickly realize that the conditions have taken a downhill turn since the last time they visited. They hatch a plan to help their families once and for all. Meanwhile, a space cadet named Cyrus has just graduated and he has been given the posting of capital security. While on a mining planet, he runs into Ava and Shane during their heist and it's kind of the story how they all become involved with one another. Honestly, this was a pretty forgettable book, unfortunately. It started off with such a bang with the prison breakout, but it just quickly became very slow and dull, in my opinion. This is a Bonnie and Clyde retelling, but for a story that is supposed to be exciting, I feel like a lot of the action took place off page, which felt a bit of a cheat. I did like all the bloodshed and murder, though. I thought that both of the relationships that take place in the book were okay, but I wasn't truly invested in either one of them. I did think that Lark and Cyrus had some fun banter, but I felt like there was no real backstory to how these feelings developed and why they were so strong, because at the beginning it seemed like they hated each other, but then we didn't really get any reasoning why they suddenly were in love. Jared, another member of Shane and Ava's crew, was definitely a highlight of the book for me and I do wish that we got more page time with him. I did read the book in one sitting so it was a fairly easy and quick read. I just don't think that it was anything memorable, like I'm not going to be thinking about it in the future, so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I have for this part of the wrap-up is Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows 11-year-old Ollie who lost her mother in a tragic accident and so she finds solace in reading. One day she sees a woman crying by the river 
about to throw a book into it and so without thinking she steals the book and runs away. She begins reading and she discovers a story about a woman named Beth and her two sons. Beth ends up making a deal with the smiling man and it comes at a price. And then the next day Ollie and her school go on a field trip to a small farm and she finds graves with the names of the people she was reading about. On the way home, the bus breaks down and things take a spooky turn when the scarecrows of the farm come to life. This is a spooky little mid-grade book with some fun characters. I really liked Ollie. I think that the depiction of grief and depression was really well done in her character. It is a fairly short book, so I did read it in one sitting fairly quickly. I really liked the unlikely friendship between Ollie, Coco, and Brian. I think that the book inside a book trope was really cool, and I definitely want to find more books with that trope. I think that the smiling man and his scarecrows were definitely creepy and I think that they would definitely spook a lot of young readers. I think that this would make a really great October spooky read so if you have not read this book already definitely pick it up during the spooky season but I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everyone so those were the next books that I read in the month of December 2023. If you are interested in part 1 of the wrap up where I go over the first 6 books then check that out on my channel. Channel. The last part will be up soon, hopefully, but let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!